start it now.
Good morning. And welcome to the community of Holy Cross and our Mother of Sorrows churches as we open ourselves to the healing presence of Christ during the Eucharistic celebration. For those visiting, thank you for joining us for this Mass. You're always welcome here. This Mass will be live streamed for those who are dealing with physical challenges and for those who are able to join us for in-person worship, we look forward to praying with you in person in church. There's only one collection today, the regular collection. If you have your holy improvement envelope, please place in the collection also. As always, we thank you for your continued support. Our announcements. This weekend, we begin, we begin the Catholic Ministry Appeal for our community. Father Kaufis will be sending each parish family a letter explaining the importance of this appeal. The Catholic Ministry Appeal video is running on a loop in our parish center foil for all those to see. Thank you for your prayerful support for the Catholic Ministry Appeal. Today, there'll be a pet blessing. It'll be at our Mother of Sorrows Fatima Grotto with Deacon Tom Jewell at 12.30. All pets and their humans are invited. Holy Cross continues to be open every Wednesday from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. for Eucharistic adoration and benediction. Our Mother of Sorrows Church is open every day from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. for private prayer and on October 7th, first Friday, from noon to 3 p.m. for Eucharistic adoration. All are welcome to stop by and sit with our Lord during any of these times. Save the date. The Rosary Coast to Coast on Sunday, October 9th at 3.45 p.m. at the Mother Mary Grotto here at Holy Cross. Please bring a lawn chair. If there's rain, we'll be in the church. Here's a special one. Now next Sunday, following the 10 o'clock Mass, we will have coffee and donut hour again. All are welcome. I knew that would get a raise. Okay. And Thursday, October 20th, pilgrimage of Our Lady of Victory Basilica in Lackawanna with Father Joseph Marticello. Details will be in next weekend's bulletin. As we prepare ourselves, let us turn our attention to the altar where the holy sacrifice of the Mass will be celebrated by Father Coffus, assisted by Deacon Joe Placius on this 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Good morning. Our opening hymn is number 686 in the red hymnals, Lord of all hopefulness. Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your 
Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave us yourself to heal us and to bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Almighty, ever-living God, who, in the abundance of your kindness, surpass the merits and desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer dare not to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. How long, O Lord, I cry for help, but you do not listen. I cry out to you, violence, but you do not intervene. Why do you let me see ruin? Why must I look at misery? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and clamorous discord. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write down the vision clearly upon the tablets so that one can read it readily. For the vision still has its time, presses on to fulfillment, and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. The rash one has no integrity, but the just one, because of his faith, shall live. The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us 
sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today That today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you Our second reading is a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. Do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake but hear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. Take as your norm the sounds that you heard from me in the faith and love that is in Christ Jesus. Guard the rich trust with the help of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. The word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your servant who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here and immediately take your place at table? Would he not rather say to him, prepare something for me to eat, put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink. You may eat and drink when I am finished. Is he grateful to that servant because he did what was commanded? So should it be with you. 
When you have done all you have been commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord. Several years ago, well, maybe not that many years ago, a young priest was speaking with an older priest. And the young priest, in this particular case, was a bit full of himself. Okay, a lot of full of himself. (laughs) And in the course of the conversation, the young priest said, referring to something that he wanted. He said, I am entitled to that as a priest. The older priest looked at his younger brother and offered the following instruction. The only thing that you are entitled to is Christian burial. Full disclosure, I was that young priest. And I was grateful to the instruction of my brother priest as he called me to what it Realize, help me to realize what it meant to follow Christ. It helped me to realize that if I was going to follow Christ, I could not lay claim to any special privilege, regardless of my position. After all we do, We cannot claim some type of special favor of the Lord. We have done what we were asked to do, and we are not able to say, look at all that I have done. Look at the position that I have. This is what I want. It's not the way it works when we follow Christ. We are not able to claim any type of entitlements. Rather, what we can claim is what God gives us generously. What we heard mentioned in our collect at the beginning of this Mass, the opening prayer, and that is God's mercy. As we heard Deacon Joe proclaim in the Gospel from Luke, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. A servant cannot go to his or her master and claim some type of special privilege. Rather, we receive everything from God as a gift. It's important for us to remember that in the beginning of this section for the gospel for this Sunday, what the disciples asked for, they specifically asked, increase our faith. They had a desire to grow in faith. It's interesting, as I I have been reflecting on faith, 
Faith is the exact opposite of entitlement. From an entitlement perspective, we believe that we've earned something. It's ours. It's ready at the asking. But faith, faith as we know is something altogether different. Faith reminds us that what we have comes from God's mercy. This is a good reminder for us at all times, but especially this weekend as we begin the Catholic ministry's appeal within our community of Holy Cross and our Mother of Sorrows. As your pastor, I rely on the diocesan support. I call on the diocese frequently within a given week to help me with the tools that I need to make sure that I am leading these two communities. I call on them for support with information technology. I call on them to help with the work of evangelization. I call on them with questions regarding canon law. I ask for their help with human resources and maintaining our two beautiful churches that we love so very much. And whenever I call on them, they are always there for me. And not just me, but the members of my ministry team. Whenever we are looking to begin a new program, a new outreach ministry in our community, we call the diocese. And we, over the past several months to about a year and a half, have introduced many new ministries within our community. For example, Heart Speaks to Heart, reaching out to those in our community who are homebound or living in a nursing home, sending the residents of different nursing homes throughout our community an encouraging note. Before we did that, we ran that program by the diocese to get their support. And this is why I'm asking today for your help so that the tools that I need and the tools that my ministry team needs to continue the good work that has begun within our two communities may continue to flourish. Your gift to the Catholic ministry's appeal ensures that those tools will be available for me and for my ministry team as well as other pastoral leaders throughout our diocese. And that is why I have made my two contributions to the Catholic Ministry's appeal, one for Holy Cross and one for Mother of Sorrows. I have also decided, because many are not able to make a gift, I have decided to increase the amount that I give for each of our parishes. I realize, obviously, these are very difficult times. And so when asking for financial support, I do so very cautiously and try to be as thoughtful as possible. But I really feel that the two goals that we have are certainly reachable. It may take us some time. We're in no rush. We have between now and May. But I encourage you to take some time within the coming days to prayerfully consider making a gift to the Catholic Ministry's appeal. I know Bishop Matano has sent letters to each of our homes, and then I sent a letter. It's always good to make sure the bishop letter arrives first and then I'm second. And so I would encourage you to prayerfully consider supporting this very important initiative, the Catholic Ministry's Appeal. I've mentioned that there are good things happening within our community of Holy Cross 
and our mother of sorrows. And I truly believe that there are good things happening. We are people of the good news. And so I think it's important for us to realize what is happening that is good. Just a few of the things that we can point to. As you can tell by now, I am profoundly grateful to the diocese and to Bishop Matano for appointing me the pastor of this community, of our Mother of Sorrows and Holy Cross parishes. I do not deserve his trust, and I am humbled that he has seen fit to entrust these two communities to me. And I see the bishop and I see our diocese as collaborators with us in bringing about the good work that we can certainly be proud of. One successful thing that we should be proud of is that our school, under the leadership of T.J. Verzillo, is thriving. We have a great number of students in our school here at Holy Cross. Father Marticello and myself and Father Schrader and even David Cataline, our seminarian, regularly visit the school. We are very proud of the outreach of this community to teach our students about Jesus Christ, to help them realize that our faith in Christ is the greatest treasure that we could ever have. Our school is indeed flourishing. Thanks to the contributions of our parishioners, obviously here at Holy Cross, but also thanks to the diocesan support, the diocesan financial support that we rely on for this school to continue its important mission. We are also blessed to see more people coming to Mass. Just yesterday at the five o'clock Mass, a woman came up to me and said that she had previously been watching the Mass on live stream but was happy now, after the invitation has been given, to return to Mass. It was the first time that she saw me in person, and I was quick to point out to her that I am actually thinner in person. <laughs> and she agreed. We also have a developing faith formation program and are blessed to have Emmanuel Malik as our director an opportunity that exists within the Family Faith Formation Program is not only to teach our children the faith, which is obviously extremely important, but as a part of the new evangelization to teach parents as well about the faith, to engage them, to remind them that they are the most important teachers for their children in the faith. And Emmanuel, is doing a phenomenal job organizing and administrating this program, which again, in designing the program, we referred and relied on diocesan support. I'm also pleased to share with you that over the past two years, two years, we have had 60 new families join the parish here at Holy Cross. That is good news. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. That applause is almost as hearty as coffee and donuts. <laughs> At our Mother of Sorrows, we have had not quite, but pretty darn close to 50 new families join the parish at our Mother of Sorrows. These are good things. On a given weekend, we have approximately 800 to 900 people coming to Mass when you combine the attendance from both of our churches together. Nearly a thousand people are coming to Mass on a given weekend. That certainly is good news. I 
I also want to explain, because I know there's going to be a lot of conversation about this, and I'll continue to answer the question as best I can. Why are the two goals different for our Mother of Sorrows and Holy Cross? It's a very good question. One of the ways in which that goal is established is based upon the number of parishioners in a given parish. Mother of Sorrows simply does not have the same number of parishioners that Holy Cross has. Whenever you have a parish with a school, you are simply going to have more families in that parish. And so that is one of the reasons why the goal is different for our two parishes. These are the good things that are happening within our community. And to continue them, I need your support. I've worked for two years. I've given all that I have as your pastor, and I am privileged and blessed to serve you. To make sure that this community of Holy Cross and our Mother of Sorrows is a leadership community within the diocese, I give nearly every hour of my time in a given day to ensure that this community continues to share the good news. And I believe that our success is paying off. There are so many things that we are grateful for. I also believe that the diocese is a collaborator with us. And that is why I encourage you to make a contribution to the Catholic ministry's appeal the diocese turns to us, this community of Holy Cross and our Mother of Sorrows, to be of assistance, to help. That is why, when Bishop Matano was assigning a newly ordained priest in Father Marticello, he called our community and asked if we would be willing to have a newly ordained priest here in our community of our Mother of Sorrows and Holy Cross. And I said, yes. When two different senior priests were looking for a place to stay after they had retired as active pastors, both Father Darling and now Father Schrader, the diocese suggested that they would come and stay with us. Why? Because they see us as a collaborator. When Bishop Matano was looking for a place to assign his only pastoral year seminarian to a parish for a year in the person of David Catiline, he called us, and I accepted for our faith community. We are blessed within our community to have the ministry of two deacons, Deacon Tom Jewell and Deacon Joe Palacios. People ask me, my brother priests, they say, why is it that you have these priests and these deacons in your community? I'll say, well, obviously the bishop thinks I need a lot of help. <laughs> Today I need your help. I need your assistance so that we can reach this goal, which I truly believe is possible. It'd be wonderful, amazing if we could do it by Christmas but I certainly don't want to put any undue pressure on you. I'm very grateful to serve you as your pastor. It is the reason why I get up in the morning and I ask for your help with this very important initiative. Everything that we have, my brothers and sisters, is a gift from Almighty God. It is Him and in his mercy that we rely on. I invite you to stand as we profess what we believe.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who is crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. Amen. When our faith is the size of a mustard seed, God can work wonders. In confidence, we present our needs for our holy leaders in the church, that they may stir into flame the gift of God and the spirit and power and love and self-control received in their holy ordinations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the areas of the world in which there is destruction and violence, strife and clamorous discord, that the cities of the prophets may draw down God's compassion on the little ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may bear our share of the hardships for the gospel with the strength that comes from God, proud of our testimony to our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those affected by Hurricane Ian and Fiona, may they find healing and strength in the prayers we offer and the love of our Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That men and women may generously open their hearts to God's invitation to serve his people through the priesthood, the diaconate, and religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ayla Jean and Wesley Anthony Head, who will be baptized into our parish family this weekend. May they grow in love and faith of the Catholic Church inspired by their parents and godparents. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those enrolled in our book of prayers, for all who are distressed or suffering in body, mind, and spirit, that our faith as we pray for them may be strong and effective, moving mountains of pain and bringing healing and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithfully departed ones, that the vision of their heavenly destiny may press on to fulfillment in peace and gladness, especially Jane Snyder, Raymond Lorenzi, James Faker, and Kurt Compton, and for Guy M. Vito, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment and make our own private petitions. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, who promise life to those who are just, make us pleasing in your sight and favorably receive our prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 669 in the Green Hymnals, The Servant Song.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and through it the wellspring of all blessing be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, <coughs> Jesus Christ. Your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and to manifest the resurrection. And so with 
the angels, and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and Matthew, our Bishop Emeritus, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our Mother of Sorrows, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
wine for all peoples, people who thirst. May we who eat be bread for others. May we who drink for another. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life, broken to our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament with, with which we, by the sacrament which we have received, as we 
are transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Don't we have a great music ministry program? This choir and all the people. Next weekend, coffee and donuts. Isn't that great? Why is it that when we have coffee and donuts, the pastor's not here? I don't know. That doesn't seem, that doesn't seem right. I don't think I'll be here next, but I'm sure Father Schrader or Father Mark DeSella will enjoy them for me. So, hope you all have a wonderful day. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is in the red hymnals, number 674, We Walk by Faith. <clears throat> we walk by faith and not by sight, no gracious words we hear from him who spoke was told that coffee and donuts are not next week, but they are the 16th, so I will be here for that. <laughs> not that I'm entitled to coffee and donuts. Have a great day, everyone.